down in Grenada on the island of Cariacou. I'm here on a work trip and doing the best I can to carry on with the big wild year. So I'm supervising a student group while they do some scuba diving courses. And we have the morning off. So we've come down to a spot called Sparrow Bay, which is a black sand beach, which is kind of neat. And I'm just having a little snoop around for some things to eat while these guys have a swim and pick seashells and see what there is to see. When I was here last year at the same time, these um, cactuses had their fruits on them and they were delicious. Right now this cactus has just got iguana skins on it. One, two, three of them. And uh, it looks like the fruits are just immature right now. There's lots of them around at that green stage. I was really hoping to get some fresh ones, but I guess it's not going to happen this trip down. So I'm going to look around for other things that I can eat. It looks like somebody had a little feast of crabs over here. I'm just wandering around having a look. And these fruits over here are what I came to take a picture of because I don't know what they are. And I'm curious. So they start out green and then they mature to that chocolatey brown. And then they fall off the tree. So I haven't actually found anything to eat down here, but I bought some sea plums in the market this morning and some bananas and my favorite fruit ever, sour sop. It's not ripe yet, so it's just on my uh, balcony for a couple days until it's ready to eat. I thought I might see an iguana or something. But so far nothing. The students are all swimming and snorkeling. Checking out some of the fish around that big rock. And I've just been snooping around in the woods here. Lots of little lizards, which is pretty cool. I'll flip the camera here. So there's one there, for example. So if I was back home and I heard a little rustling like that, 90% of the time it would be a little sparrow. And here... 90% of the time, it's a little lizard or an anole or a gecko. It's pretty cool. Here's some more of those fruits. Maybe you know what it is and you can leave me a comment below. I'm not going to carry them out of here because I don't know if they're edible or not. Oh! Stepped on a spine. Ouch. Look at that. Just pulled that out of my foot. There's a green one. And if I back up, you can see them on this taller tree in the back. I think I looked them up last year and they were not edible, but I can't remember what they were. But I'll ask some of the local guys. And then, we have five and a half days of dives. So I'll be out with the students. They have some advanced uh, open water or some uh, open adventurous diving to do. And I'm going to do some lionfish hunting. Oh, that mean I'm doing less... Oh. oh, look at that. Keep your sandals on, boys and girls. Ouch. Don't walk around barefoot. What was I saying? Five and a half days of dives. So have a stockpile of coconuts to uh, dry 
mangoes to dry. Citrus fruits to collect and eat. Dry the peels. So I'll still be doing lots of stuff, but I'll have a little bit less time because I'm uh, doing dives with the students and I still have my work emails to do and things, but fit in as much as I can. There's an organization that patrols the beaches here in the turtle nesting season. Uh, and I'll show you something here. So that kind of looks like maybe a turtle nest. Um, but when they find one, as far as I know, you know, maybe that's the turtle nest. Or that's the turtle nest. Or that one, or that one. So they'll dig some false nests just to make it a little more difficult for people to... Uh, because there are egg hunters here, or iguanas, or other creatures that'll come around and uh, eat turtle eggs. I don't even know what this is. Big piece of bone. Oops, not in the camera. Looks calcified. I don't know what that would be. Old piece of turtle shell or whalebone or coral. Something that got burnt in a fire. It would be a mystery. So we've been wandering around quite a bit. One of my students, Jadrian. You can be famous on YouTube now. Yeah. Star. Swapping stories and did finally find some cactus tunas, but they're on this other cactus. I haven't picked from this kind before. I don't know what it is. Um, so I'm just going to try and carefully um, take off some of these guys. Oh, I might need my knife for that. Oh, no. I got to be careful because there's still little, uh, I guess they're called glockids. Little short spines, and uh, I don't want those in my mouth when I'm eating them. So, Let's see, there's one here. I don't know if I'll be able to reach that tall one. One down here that's reachable. Two. Oh, two at the back, two nice ones. Yeah. So I will not go back empty-handed. And also on the walk in, I we went by a really really nice tamarind tree. So I'm gonna pick from that as well. Look how fantastic that color is. Oh, you can eat the seeds in this one. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit bland, but I like it. That's alright. We'll pick a few more. Yeah, this is a beautiful tamarind tree. So we've all had our swim, anybody who wanted to swim, and we're on our way back. And we're going to pick some tamarinds. I don't know if very many of them are on the ground, but there are lots of, lots of little ones up in the branches. So we'll see how we do. You want to pick these ones here that are like this light brown color. Okay. Um, and then there are some older ones that are darker, but I don't think we want those. We just want these fresh looking ones. I think that's too old. So Let me get you in the video there. Those dark brown ones I think are too old, but we could crack it open and see. No, that's the right color, that light brown. That's good. As soon as the camera's on, eh, it gets a little bit harder. Naturally. I was just trying to knock them loose, but it worked well on the other branch. Yeah. There we go. Oh, that's a dead branch. Nothing's coming down. Huh? 
There we go. But a bunch of them fell. There's a few. Try a couple more low hanging branches and see how we make out. There's some more tamarind from today. Just let all those guys dry out. these guys and dry them up in the oven because the humidity is just too high here to dry stuff outside and because I'm diving basically half of every day it's hard to keep tabs on things and keep flipping them over and uh, moving them into the sunshine so the oven's making a huge difference Ooh, rotten one. I saw a few other tamarind trees today, but they did not have fresh fruits, so I feel like it kind of lucked out to uh, get into the two or three trees that I did find. And it was nice to have help from the students the one day as well. Picking. Sped things up a bit. Such a good flavor. Um, they make a cooling drink here with it. So there's tamarind and maybe some sugar blended together. Or I'm not exactly sure how it's made, but it's kind of become a favorite of some of the students. They have it every day at lunch. And uh, somebody shared one with me the other day, so I tried it out and it was really good. So I'm going to have to look that up and see when it gets hot back home. Can maybe mix up something similar with some uh, maple sugar or maple syrup, some tamarind, and maybe some, what else would be good? The wild cucumber root. That'd probably be good in there too. It's really refreshing. So we'll see. 
course Daphne's the spice wizard so we'll see I'm gonna bring this over watch what she does with it and then duplicate it when I'm doing alone meals and just enjoy it when we're doing together meals so it should end up with a pretty pretty good pile most of these are good it's just a couple that are uh, rotten and this tree or the two trees we collected from produced a lot of small single ones but there's a bunch of triples in here also and they even get a little bit bigger than that I think the main thing is just that they're in good condition so those can go in the oven next and I've also got coconuts that I've been putting through the oven mangoes that I've been putting through the oven I think I can do about five or six mangoes on a tray and it takes me pretty much a full day to uh, dry them down on the lowest heat setting the coconuts take most of a day to dry down and toast up a little bit on the lowest heat setting and what I do at night is I just turn the oven off and uh, let them stay in there with the pilot light on that one's not right yet it's just green inside so I also just did a pretty epic run slash walk we covered quite a bit of the island all uphill at the start and all downhill at the end and um, we picked a papaya some citrus oranges the bergamot oranges and some mango but we went through a forested part and I didn't I don't really see anything I recognize there um, so you know when you're down here most of the foraging is from permaculture stuff that people have planted in the same way that you would get into uh, wild apples back home and it's you know somebody's planted it and abandoned it or it's just kind of happened to be in an old yard and that's what it seems to be like here like everybody's got bananas or coconuts or oranges sea plums papaya guava um, all those kinds of things as permaculture gardens and then among that you might see people growing tomatoes or cucumber um, I've also only been down here in the dry season so things might look quite a bit different I know I've seen breadfruit when I've been down here um, before on trees I haven't spotted any this year but I saw some in the market and I um, picked up some uh, breadfruit and salt fish so tomorrow I'll probably cook um, breadfruit and salt fish I think I'm gonna fry it that should be pretty tasty and tonight I'm very excited because it's wild game night so uh, Tim who's the cook here at the resort and the owner um, has prepared a wild food meal for us I think that pigeon and iguana is on the menu so I'm very excited about that and I have five days left on this trip so you know, I'm diving every morning and then in the afternoons when the students are in uh, class doing their coursework I'll probably be busy trying to dry up as many more coconuts as I can and as many more mangoes as I can and I've kind of just been living on bananas, coconut, mango and a bit of fish so the mornings when we're diving, the students are doing skills dives and they do a few adventure dives. They're working on their advanced adventure certification through SSI. And, um, and I accompany them, but I'm bringing a spear and a zookeeper, which is a way to um, keep the lionfish contained after you shoot them so you don't get stung accidentally. And uh, the dive shop down here has special permission to um, fish for lionfish both in the marine protected areas and outside the marine protected areas so it's a way of 
um, controlling them on the reefs because they otherwise eat up all the juveniles of the other fish species and they eventually take over and become up to 90% of the biomass on a reef for fish, which is not good for the reef. Um, but here, for example, I dove twice this morning, about 40 minutes each dive, and I did not see a single lionfish. Um, so they've been pretty effective on a lot of the reef areas at controlling them, which is pretty cool. It's a good program. And the people who are wild fishing here also will target the lionfish. Um, so what's interesting here is that the price of fish is regulated and all fish are the same price. All fish are six Caribbean dollars, which is the per pound, uh, which is the equivalent of three Canadian dollars per pound and is the equivalent of about uh, $2 and change per pound US. Um, so it doesn't matter if they shoot a barracuda or a lionfish or a parrotfish, they all have the same per pound value. And um, which kind of in some ways incentivizes people just to shoot bigger fish. Uh, although, you know, there are definitely species that are more desirable. If you go for lunch, um, you're very likely to um, see barracuda on the menu or marlin on the menu and then less frequently you'll see other fish or it just won't be advertised by species so if you get a fish sandwich it's probably something else that's been um, made into a fish burger which are pretty tasty too I've had those in other years um, and then there are people who go out deep sea fishing so you can charter uh, fishing boats to take you out for marlin and you can do long line fishing i've never done that i'm not quite sure how the licensing works it's something i have to look into um, in case i'm down here on a trip and i have a chance to go long line fishing so for now i've got my dive certificate to be a lionfish hunter and uh, so that's going to keep me busy most mornings for the rest of the week and then these tamarinds and the coconuts and the mangoes are going to keep me busy for the afternoons. And I might also uh, go and observe a hunt. Um, so the game species down here are the pigeons, the big ones, and iguanas, and opossums, which they call manicu. Um, I haven't seen one yet except for couple of squished ones on the road. I guess there's enough of them around, but they uh, maybe are active at night. There's a pretty good bird variety down here too. The pigeons are really numerous. Tropical mockingbirds, carib grackles, banana quits. Those are the ones that I see most frequently. And then out on the water, it's the uh, brown boobies, the laughing gulls, and brown pelicans. Uh, <clears throat> and the frigate birds, so those are what I see most frequently on the reefs. And uh, the fish, I'm not so good at identifying when I'm underwater yet. Um, but there's a really good variety of them down there as well. Reefs are like the tropical rainforest of the ocean. They're super productive, they're very critical. Um, they help to break up the waves before they get land, so they're important for that. But they also are a source of food for coastal communities. And uh, ultimately they also supply the, the bird food chain. So lots of the birds are fishing on the reefs. That's where you see the pelicans, the laughing gulls, the brown boobies. Um, they're, they'll also fish in the open ocean, but they you tend to really see them around the reefs. And probably wonder about sharks. Um, so if you're really, really lucky, you'll see a black tipped reef shark here. Uh, last year I heard that somebody had seen a hammerhead and we sometimes will see nurse sharks, which are a shark that doesn't even have teeth. 
Um, but typically they like the cooler water. And when we're diving, water temperature is like 27 degrees Celsius, so it's pretty warm. The air temperature has been about 32 every day, and the humidity has been up and down around 60%. So those are the conditions. And what's kind of weird coming down here too is because you're close to the equator, the uh, daylight length of day doesn't really change very much. Um, so back home we were just getting into our longer and longer days and then I came down here and the days were short again. So that'll be uh, strange going back like it's 6.30 now and it's just about to get dark. Um, we're back home I think we might have light until maybe 9, 9 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock now. Which was a nice change from the winter when it was getting dark at 4 o'clock which is kind of a bummer. Hard to get a lot of sun in the winter in uh, Northern Canada. Uh, down here, it's hard to not get too much sun. I've been really careful, so I've kept my sunburns to a minimum. And uh, so far, so good. There's a pigeon in the palm tree right beside me. Let's see if I can get a picture of that for you. Now that I'm all stained with tamarind juice. Well, we flew off, but uh, there's some coconut off the balcony here. Over there, there's a citrus orange. And more coconuts behind. There's also a nice mango tree back there. These are all bananas. And more bananas out the front. Lots of permaculture. It's a smart way to grow food. There's a couple of pigeons over there. Some Caribbean grackles. They're numerous here. And a little puppy at the resort. Hey buddy, hey! He's a biter. He just wants to play all the time. Hey, You're a toe biter a lot of the time. Hey, quit biting. Hey, quit biting. Come on. So here are those tamarinds. They're still a little bit sticky, so I don't know if I'm going to get them right dried out before I have to go, so I might just bag them up like that. And then I have another batch to put in, and I leave tomorrow. So I need to get them done. This is probably my last batch of coconut for this trip. It's not quite dry yet, but some of it is browning up nicely. And hopefully that fan in the background is not too irritating. And my last batch of mangoes. 